Okay, so on the bench at the moment uh, is an FT1000D for Delta. Now, the D for Delta was uh, D for Deluxe, and um, I'll show you how we determine that. Having the advantage of the uh, original box, <laughs> um, you have, used to have written on the FT1000 Deluxe HF. The other thing, too, is you had the um, uh, codes on here that also showed you 200 watts, um, crystal filters fitted. Uh, there's actually three fitted. And on the box, normally they had BPF. Sorry, where did they have that? Oh, there we go. Sorry, sorry. Uh, with uh, BPF one on the on the rear. So with that, the TXCO that's all fitted as well. Um, they used to make these things up to uh, be a um, FT1000 Deluxe straight out of Australia. So an almost impossible radio to get in the year 2020 in this condition. Um, um, I've got a couple of these that people may know of. Um, this one's got a fault, um, and um, let me show you what the fault is, because um, you won't pick it up easily um, with an antenna on, and let me tell you why, because the, the fault kind of hides, it hides itself um, when you've got sort of say S7, S6 noise, etc, if you're on 80 metres, this fault will predominantly show itself on 80 and 40 metres, but I'll show you, there we go, look at that. Now, you may say, hey dummy, you've got the um, calibrator on, but no, no calibrator. I'm going to tell you there's no calibrator on. That's what it does. It keeps on doing that. So, as you can see, this radio look, transmits and receives beautifully. No issue at all. But this here, uh, this has been months of work trying to work out what the hell's going on. Um, I've been on this thing with my analyzer for so, so long. And I think I found the problem in the um, the RF unit. It's been um, a bit of fun. Um, now, from memory, you'll even go to 10 megs. Yep. It's about every 17 to 20 kilo, uh, kilometers, I'll be right. 17 to 20 kilohertz. See, it's there in a very minor way. Hang on, let me turn that up. See, the S meter is not, so you wouldn't even know the fault was there. If you're a 20 meter fanatic, wouldn't know it was there. 18 megs with an antenna fitted, never know. Oh, it's, I can just hear it now. Anyway, so you get the idea. So we knew that we had a fault somewhere in the low pass filter. Um, so it's, it's in here oscillating somewhere. Um, and it's one of those faults that you can really, turn the volume down would be a good idea. As you can see, I've got the screws out at the moment um, of this board. Um, not a, by the way, um, don't do that. <laughs> um, not a good idea. Um, but um, here yeah, certainly, and as you can see, like we've still got things plugged off the transmitter at the moment. We've isolated things to try and isolate the fault. And and this is the thing about fault finding is you're forever, you know, isolating. Um, me, I had a feeling that it, it just felt like it was an oscillation in the RF unit. Didn't feel like it was PLL related. It just um, the fact that it was so uh, heavily, uh, you know, the high, high signal strength on 80 meters and 40 meters so it made me think, well, you know, what's going on in here somewhere? Something's not right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's have a look. I'll show you what I think. Right, we've just popped the board out. Um, just remember, whenever you're dealing with a FT1000D, uh, that um, unplug your 240 volts from the back because you'll be running your hands around everywhere and there are volts everywhere in these things so just just you know I mean I love the fact they've protected things here trust me you can take a wallop if it's not but um, you know what you'll live longer uh, as you'll see from the back here we unplug because it's it's <laughs> I want to live I'm trying to anyway I'm trying my best all right okay so in here um, I need to get up on top of this a bit let me just get some light onto this a bit better um, a couple of transistors that and when you have a look on the circuit, um, are in this area, and um, uh, the only common factor I could find uh, was actually, sorry, over here. Um, see how this 0.01, you, actually, you can see, even see on the board, uh, is, is basically, oh, I can't really see, can you? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. okay, so it feeds that um, uh, transistor there, and this whole area, they just buffer all, all around this whole area here. Um, so... I'm going to pull that out, have a bit of a look. There's just a suspicion that these have either gone low gain or this is this is giving me some trouble here. So we'll find out. 
All right. All right. So what I've done, I've just pulled out that little capacitor, and because I've only got uh, one hand free with my fantastic camera system that we use here, we've gone to incredible expense as uh, everybody that's ever been here is aware and sees me playing around doing videos so we've pulled out that capacitor out of there we just want to measure it to see what's going on now i'm more interested in whether it's actually showing some resistance versus measuring its capacitance value for now uh, because it feels like it's um, causing that oscillator to um, to generate and to do that that this would have to have gone into the high end resistance so let's have a bit of a look just see what we get um, i'm not expecting it Oh, what I expected, what I got. All right. So 7.1K. K. All right. It's just moving a little bit. It's going to move a bit there. All right. Okay, let me just get set up. All right, so what I've done, I've just grabbed another uh, uh, what, uh, 103, I was going to say, 0.01 um, out of stock. Uh, we have um, uh, quite a lot of these uh, sitting around. Um, I'm just checking something here. Interesting, that's a bit small. I'm just making sure we grab the right one. <laughs> Hang on, two ticks. Let's have a little look through. I've got my magic little thing here. I can, pretty sure it was a 0.01. Jeez, it's a bit rubbed off, isn't it? Um, not real easy to. Okay, hang on a sec. All right, don't mind me. I was just checking to make sure that was a 0.01. So, what we're going to do is we're going to have a bit of a look at this one and say, righto, what have we got? All right, that's what I'd expect to see. So, I'm a little bit concerned. Um, I'm using a little bit larger form factor here. Um, and um, we'll just see how we go. We're going to put one of these in and just see how we, uh, what results we get. Okay, we've sort of shot over to video number two, which means I'll get Riley to fix, put this together. <laughs> okay, let's just see what we've got. Now, I haven't bolted the board back in yet because we might have to pull it out because I could be completely wrong, so we'll see. Righto, so the big soak test and way to find out. Look at that. And lots of volume. Now... That's, um, that has definitely got rid of it altogether, which is lovely. Let's put a signal into it. Okay, and we're putting 0.4 of a microvolt into it. And it's receiving beautifully. And we've lost our other bits and pieces. Very slight, very, you can just hear something in there, but no signal re response, which I've got to really go high to find anything. So there's just a very slight, but you'll never hear that, which is thank goodness for that. So... That really is um, a absolute burden that's been a painful. This has been for months. We've been trying to work this one out. Um, really has been interesting. So we'll put this all back together in here. As you can see, we'll put a slightly bigger um, bit in there, uh, 0.01 in there. And um, but that's uh, the form factor is a bit bigger, but that seems to be working quite okay. All right. Well, um, I can't really take this thing to full power on. Uh, on this analyzer if we want to do a, um, a power test but I can maybe just back the power down a bit uh, RF power let's go about halfway let's put it into uh, yeah I think we got that FM and let's go to MOX about half power uh, let's have a look there what am I doing completely wrong sorry just let me get it on the right part of the band and governmental gear Oh, hang on. <laughs> I'm thinking don't transmit. Why? Well, let me tell you why. Um, that's a really easy one to um, to tell you. We haven't. Um, we were disabling the transmit before. Um, now, once again, as I said to you before, pull the power um, over here. This actually goes in RF stage, etc. They work a lot better uh, when they've got um, uh, some um, a bit of high voltage on the 200 watt stages. They they work terrible without it. Hang on, let's get this plug in. Right up. We might get power now. Let's try again. I told you we always show you the faux pas. Um, <laughs> oh, God. All right. Into there. All right. There we go. All right. So I'm just at 50 watts there. Um, let's just take that up a bit onto the analyzer. I won't go much more than that. As you'll see, 124.9, that's it. Uh, this will go to 200 watts, this, um, this unit. But, um, yeah, fantastic. All right. We are extremely happy. Finally, an FT1000D. This came from a customer down in Geelong that, um, unfortunately, I've had it for so, so long. Um, I've been trying to fix it. I've pulled out the box a number of times and just haven't been able to fix it. Finally, if I went through the number of things I checked and where I, I've had this thing into a million pieces, 
um, and then I um, got a European chap sort of said to me check the RF unit he's had problems there before and and you know what that helped heaps but um, <laughs> that doesn't put aside the I've got about 10 hours into this radio to get this, this problem fixed uh, it's been a seriously um, bad buy you know as far as look it's a great radio now but it was a bad buy and the fact that um, you know, I've had to spend eight hours to get it going for something that was supposed to be working. But anyway, check your radios when you buy them from people. Um, it's probably, you know, the only thing I'll say about that. All right, 73s. I'm going to get Riley to put two videos together to make this one video now. <laughs> he'll, he'll sort it out for me. Cheers. All the best. VK3 Charlie Mike. Uh, please subscribe. We actually really appreciate the number of subscribers lately. It's, it's jumping up quite well. So really appreciate that. All the best. If you've got an FT1000D and you're having problems with it, check out this video because... Um, um, that uh, this fault has been a pain and this can save you a lot of time just by simply uh, checking around those two transistors and that cap um, that we uh, displayed in here and by the way we will bolt the board back in 73 is all the best